Brooklyn Independent Television. Welcome to Brooklyn Review. I'm Brian Vines. Reality TV has come to Brooklyn, but not everyone is fist pumping at the prospect of turning Brighton Beach into the Jersey Shore. Russian Dolls on the Lifetime Network takes us into the lives and drama of eight Brighton Beach residents. But Tati Amara got to see a different side of the community when she recently paid a visit to the shore. I just want to thank you all for coming. It is a wonderful event. Brighton Beach is responding to the Lifetime TV reality show called Russian Dolls, chronicling the lives of eight people in the community. Newsflash, people. Back off. We're in America. Break it down. The main criticism being that the show only highlights stereotypes. I don't think that that show would put a good light, proper light, uh, on the Russian-speaking community in New York City. And it's not all about mobsters, it's not about overdone women who talk about getting married to go to fancy restaurants. There's so much talent, there's so much happening in South Brooklyn, and it's so underrepresented. At a festival held at the Brooklyn Aquarium called Art on Brighton, the community used the arts to speak out. With the backdrop of musical performances, there was art on display and films being shown, all from local artists. And we wanted to bring Russian-speaking artists and be represented and show the, the diversity and the deepness of this community. So what's the real Brighton Beach versus what the TV show portrayed? Yelena Maknin from the Neighborhood Business Improvement District gave me her opinion. This is business. You cannot sell what people don't want to buy. That's why it was the drama, 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 even boring drama, tasteless drama, but still drama. That's not how people live. Brighton has its own spirit. It's a Russian taste, but uh, more and more people are coming over. More people are coming to the neighborhood, she explained, to see what Brighton Beach has to offer. But she's always protective. Six or seven years ago, one reporter came and we spoke and he said, I want to uh, take your picture. Okay. And uh, he put me next to the liquor store. I say, hold on a second. Uh... That's not a picture, you know, that's not a picture. I want people to see, not a picture of mine, but I don't like this kind of part of, you know, kind of association, you know. Right, uh, Russian body. Yeah, and no I said, way. you know, so he said, where do you, I said, next to the bookstore. Yelena took me to Brighton Beach Avenue, the main vein of the neighborhood, for a glimpse of how people live. First stop, a bilingual bookstore. We have books. We have books for the small kids. We have uh, for advanced from six, seven and up. For the smaller kids, we just have every basic things, like Russian alphabet, all the books. They even have a little nostalgia in their store. Okay. That's a classical toy. My mom had the same. <laughs> Everybody had the same, and it never falls, so every kid is, can play it. It's playing music. It's become a place where the community can preserve their Russian culture and be American. In comparison with the previous years, even 20 years, 30 years back, they're trying to speak both languages. They suddenly realize they need their language. Really huge heritage behind us. Right. So why, why shouldn't we preserve it? Sure. <laughs> and, and that doesn't take away from you being, it doesn't make you less American? Or, no, no, right? no. They go to regular school. But one thing on the avenue that has remained very Russian is the food. What you see there, that's a mix of those different cultures from the different republics, now different countries we came from. It's, uh, you'll find something similar to Turkish, to Paklava. Paklava. Those kind of uh, rogelach. It's uh, a little bit Jewish and a little bit of uh, Ukrainian. It's very popular. To me, it's a unique place because you cannot find the variety like you find there. 
Even more than the variety in food, she wanted me to see a real Russian doll. This one had a twist. This is the Russian president as of now, Dmitry Medvedev, but everyone who knows about Russian politics knows about the somebody behind the scene, not really behind, who's going to become the next president of Russian Federation, uh, Mr. Putin. Uh, I don't know if you can call it Russian doll now. Right. It's a Russian history lesson in, in dolls, you know. But Yelena really wants people to know. Number one, we do speak English. And we do accept American dollars, not only rubles from Russia. We wel welcome everyone to eat, not our food, but eat with us. And uh, we believe that if you eat with us, and if you party with us, and if you have good time with us, you would understand us better. For Brooklyn Review, I'm Tati Amara. Become a fan on Facebook, like Brooklyn Independent Television.